Live NFL trivia every Tuesday night on Twitch at 10 p.m. Eastern. Come show off your football knowledge and have a chance to win cash prizes. Check the link in the description to find out more. And now, on with our feature presentation. The NFL Today on CBS is a solid pregame show. While it has its flaws, there are a lot of things about it that I really like. You're not going to find too many hosts better than James Brown. He's been doing it for years, and he is the consummate professional. Nate Burleson is incredible. He's got charisma and an energy about him that is just infectious. And between this show and especially Good Morning Football, he is just a joy to watch. And a few years ago, they added the first on the field segment, where they took you to your game halfway through the show just to break up the monotony of the studio. Is the show perfect? No. Is the concept of a pregame show kind of outdated? To an extent, yes. Are there some things that I change about the show? Oh, you bet. But maybe it's because I grew up a Jaguars fan, and CBS broadcasts are way less foreign to me than Fox, and maybe it's because I don't have to worry about whether or not Rob Riggle is going to be funny on his segments, which, spoiler alert, 90% of the time, he's not. But the NFL today is perfectly fine. It's a solid, inoffensive, by-the-book show that gets the job done. And that's all right with me. I say all of that because holy cow, they just introduced one of the worst pregame show segments I've ever seen in my life. Look, I'm usually not going to fault a network for trying to spice things up and trying to change things. Not everything can stay the same forever, and nobody gets it 100% right on the first try. But if you had the joy of watching the NFL Today this past Sunday, they premiered a brand new segment called Here We Go, starring Phil Sims. And it might be the worst, most uncomfortable NFL-related segment I've ever seen. I'm Serena Morales of SportsCenter, and here are your NFL highlights and emojis. On Thursday, Gronk did his job for the Patriots and scored three touchdowns in a win. Okay, scratch that. One of the worst, most uncomfortable NFL-related segments I've seen. Credit to CBS for trying to spice things up, but this new segment just doesn't work. So today, we're going to break down why that is, and what CBS can do to maybe improve and salvage this segment. So with that being said, here we go. 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 Once again. Be quiet. My turn. Here we go. Here we go again. I guess the first thing we should start off is with this. What is this segment? Well, the premise is that Phil Simms says the catchphrase, here we go, a lot. Now, it's a fairly common phrase that, to be honest, I'm not sure anyone on the planet associated with Phil Simms. It's not something like Hello Friends with Jim Nance, Booyah with the late great Stuart Scott, or any of the 10,000 catchphrases that Chris Berman has on NFL Primetime, where you immediately associate it with a sports personality. But the geniuses at CBS decided, hey, Phil Simms says this a lot. Let's devote an entire five-minute segment to it. And the end result? Yeah, it's not good at all. It's literally just your standard rapid-fire analysis, but with someone saying, here we go, every five seconds. And no, that is not an exaggeration. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Well, here we I, go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Stop. Here we go. It's only here two we go. games. Here Come. we go. Here we go. Bengals, here Texas, Broncos. Here we go. Oh, here we go. Okay, here we go. Here there it goes. goes. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> now, here's the thing. Personality-based segments can work really well. I did an entire 25-minute video on the history of Jacked Up, which was created because of ESPN's desire to use Tom Jackson's personality more on their pregame show. Check that out in the upper right corner. But in terms of segments where one of the personalities is the butt of the joke, there's a right and a wrong way to do it. So before I break down why this segment is bad, I think we need to take a look at a segment that does it right. And with that, I introduce you to Inside the NBA. There's one segment that airs every year called Who He Play For, and it is absolutely hysterical. The premise of the segment is simple. Ernie Johnson names a player who switched teams to Charles Barkley. Now, this player isn't a big name like LeBron or Giannis or anyone like that. It's a name of a guy that's either a low-end starter or a rotational player off of the bench. Chuck then has to say the name of the team that he's on right now. On average, Chuck will get maybe one or two players right out of five. He's completely guessing on these teams. There was one year where they played the game in back-to-back -back weeks with the exact same players, and he still couldn't get them right. And everyone loves this segment, including me. But why does it work? Well, number one, it takes Barkley completely out of his element. 
He was not brought on inside the NBA because of his intricate knowledge of the league. He was not brought on in the same way that a league insider is. He was brought on because he was a fantastic player and has a funny personality. He is completely out of his element with a segment like this. And when you take people out of their natural element and put them on the spot to do something completely different, it can be really funny, and that goes with anything. Number two, Barkley's got a funny personality, and I think that goes without saying. He has this charm about him that even when he's making no sense whatsoever, he is enjoyable to listen to. The rant he had on the Phoenix Suns is an all-time classic, and might legitimately be one of the funniest sports moments of all time in any sports show. I don't even think I need to go any further on that. He's just fantastic. And number three, Barkley is clearly in on the joke. He's laughing along. He's making quips. He knows he doesn't know the answers, and seeing him puzzled trying to guess the teams is entertaining. So that's an example of a poking fun segment done right. And that takes us to here we go. Basically, take everything I just said about who he played for, remove all the charm, do a complete 180, and you get this segment. So let's break this down point by point just like I did with Chuck. First off, Sims is in his element here. He was brought into CBS initially for his analysis. That's how you get a color commentator spot. He was transferred over to the NFL Today for his analysis. On this segment, he's doing analysis. There's nothing unique about this, even when compared to the rest of the show. You're having Sims do exactly what you brought him on to do. The only difference is that every five seconds, someone's interrupting him by saying, here we go. And maybe you could get away with that if the analysis was good or entertaining. But this was one of the questions. Remember that they expanded the postseason to seven teams, so there's a possibility that every team in a division can be playing in January. Sims was asked whether the NFC West would get all four teams into the playoffs. It is a yes or no question. Here's how he responded. And keep in mind that I did not cut anything out before or after. Let's take a listen. But uh, yes, I think all four NFC West teams could get in the playoffs. It'll be tough, but I think it's very possible. What kind of analysis is this? Yes, we know all four could get in. That was the question. We know that it's possible. But this is the most on the fence answer while saying nothing I've ever heard. You're dedicating an entire segment to this kind of analysis? If you did nothing but say yes or no, that would have been a better answer. So on point one, this does not work at all. Number two, Phil Simms is no Charles Barkley. His personality is very milk toast, if you will. I've got nothing bad to say about him as a person or anything like that and I haven't heard a bad thing about him, but he's very bland. There are certain guys that just naturally have that charisma, and Sims isn't one of them. You can even see that during the final years of him being paired up with Jim Nance. Listen to Nance now with Tony Romo, compared to the final years with Sims. Nance is making more jokes now. He's asking more questions to Romo than he did to Sims. And he just seems to be having a much better time calling games with Romo than with Sims, who just felt very stiff at times. And look, that's okay. There used to be a time where Sims was a very good color commentator, though he was hanging on for dear life when the 2010s rolled around. That, that does football. not look forward at all. Remember, for it to be a forward pass, it's got to go forward. Good job on that one, Phil. But to devote an entire segment to someone whose personality is very bland, or at the very least, someone whose personality does not translate that well to television, is questionable. But perhaps the biggest problem, and the main reason I made this video, that I have with this segment is point three. I don't know that Phil Simms is in on the joke. He might show it on his Twitter, but at least on the set, he just looks uncomfortable the whole time. Look at how this segment starts. Does this seem like a guy that's in on the joke? Hey, yeah. do you realize how much you say that? Hey, no, I did not know I used to say that. I'll try not to say it anymore, but... Uh... Okay, okay, Phil, here we go. And then there was also this part where Sims was visibly angry at Bill Cower for interrupting him. Easy, yeah. right now. It's Let easy. Close. No, let me finish, okay? Don't interrupt. <laughs> Just because you're asking the questions. Mm. I I'll take Patrick Mahomes. Wow, oh boy, here we go. Hey, I I'm gonna say this. You can just see it at the end. Either he thinks this isn't funny, this is a dead horse that's been beaten, or a combination of both. But whatever the case, he just does not seem comfortable with this. This feels more like laughing at someone and bullying and picking on them than it does laughing with someone. The problem is that whatever the case is, it's not good. Either Sims is in on the joke but has absolutely no charisma to pull it off, or he's not in on the joke and it's a case of the rest of the crew ganging up on him. Either way, 
it just is uncomfortable to watch. So what do we learn with the problems from this segment? Bill Sims is doing exactly what he does during every other part of the show, but worse. His catchphrase isn't associated with him, and it's not even remotely unique enough where I think of him when I think of the freeze. The analysis isn't funny or insightful. There's nothing funny about yelling here we go every five seconds and interrupting others midway through their thoughts. And it feels more like bullying than it does good fun. So how do we fix it? How can we possibly fix this broken segment? If you want to do a personality-based segment involving Phil Sims, the best way to do it might be to have him break down a random drive of his during his illustrious 15-year career with the Giants. He won't know what the drive is. It could be a touchdown drive where he makes some good throws, or it could be a drive that ends in an interception where he makes one of the worst throws of his life and everybody's laughing. It's roulette. You never know what you're going to get. But that's about the only thing that I can think of that's different than what he already does on NFL Today. Because in anything else, especially in a rapid-fire setting, a Phil Sims based joke segment just doesn't work. Or if you want to do a personality-based segment, you have Nate Burleson. You have a star on your crew that might actually be underutilized. Most of the segments that get the national recognition are the countdown-based segments, like Shaq and a Fool or You Got Moss. He's already got a segment on Good Morning Football called Toe Drag Swag, which features the best plays of a receiver keeping his feet in bounds. But a lot of people don't have NFL Network or watch Good Morning Football. I'm guessing the audience that watches football on Sunday and doesn't watch any other football-related program the rest of the week is pretty substantial. Maybe there's a way to bring that segment over to the NFL today and not have it be just a GMFB exclusive. Could be some good cross-promotion as well. It'd be way more lively than whatever CBS tried to do with Phil Sims here. And look, not every idea can be a winner. The problem comes when you don't make any changes to a completely flawed concept. And look, it's only been one segment. Maybe they're going to make some tweaks for future editions of this segment. There are certain pilots that are awful and take time to find their footing. But so far, the results for this one don't look good at all. If I were at CBS, after watching that, I'd be like Regina George yelling at Gretchen Wieners. Stop trying to make Here We Go happen. It's not going to happen. Special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. So you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.